ACC play, and here is the reigning ACC Defensive Player of the Year, Vance Honeycutt, who stands in, and the first pitch of the ball game is a strike, and we are underway on this Thursday night in beautiful Charlottesville, Virginia. Honeycutt has been admired in a little bit of a slump, but this is one of the most dynamic offensive players in the conference. He takes outside, it's one and one. This is a guy that they really need to get going for North Carolina. Yeah, I really love this move. You know, you, you think traditional leadoff hitters in baseball, that's kind of all thrown out the window today. And I like this move. Vance Honeycutt moved him to the six hole on Sunday. I think they moved him up to this leadoff spot to get him aggressive early in counts. Champs that one foul down the third base line. It's one and two. Here's what he'll be up against facing McKay. And, and you mentioned the fastball command. The stuff is plenty good for the sophomore right hand. Uh, he's got great stuff. He's got a slider curveball that he kind of uses interchangeably. It's hard down action. When he commands fastball and works ahead, he's a very, very tough pitcher to get hits on. One, two on the ground to short. The sure-handed Griff O'Farrell has it and slings it across. And the leadoff man gone in the UNC first. Scoreless game. That'll bring up the red-hot Casey Cook. Some big news for the left fielder there. As you get a look at O'Farrell, one of the top shortstops in this draft class upcoming. And Casey Cook will stand in, the left-handed hitting outfielder, named today to the midseason Golden Spikes watch list for the top amateur player in the country. The first pitch to the left-handed hitter is outside a ball, 1-0. Big fan of this guy right here. Just three homers last year, already up to nine. And he said earlier in the year he wanted to drive in more runs. And I think this is just a natural progression of a guy getting stronger and stronger. Went to the Cape, had a great summer. And I think this is a guy that's always been able to hit, now just tapping into that power. And you know, he's been a huge, huge plus for this UNC team. You got to look at Scott Forbes there, who calls him one of the best pure hitters in the conference. Cook's father played at UVA, was a shortstop here. That went up high, it's 3-0, he's from suburban D.C. And there is Coach Forbes, his fourth season as the head coach at UNC, longtime assistant, one of the great gentlemen in college baseball. We're actually really lucky this week with two of the absolute best dudes you'll find on a coaching staff, him and Brian O'Connor, and a four-pitch walk for Casey Cook. And UNC has their first base runner here in the first. Uh, Cullen McKay, that's been a little bit of his issue this year. Last start, season high, five walks, hit two batters. And really, you look at the bulk of his starts, he finds himself in very, very good counts for himself often. Just struggles to put him away. I, I think I just, I'd like to see him pound the strike zone early with that fastball, middle, middle, and attack these hitters. First pitch to the Red Hot Parks Harbor is a breaking ball strike. As we mentioned at the outset, Harbor, the ACC Player of the Week. A really big weekend in Winston-Salem, including a three-homer game on Saturday night. Snap throw over to first and Cook diving in. We're gonna look at Cook, four stolen bases on the year. We'll talk about UNC's running game throughout the night. They really do run, and they run extremely efficiently. Not going here as Harbor swings and fouls it away. It's nothing in two. Consecutive games. Yeah, that's Transfer a good from Georgia. Right there. That's gotta be. Here's the 0-2. Just off the plate, it's one and two. Did you ever homer in five straight games? Nah. Uh, I struggled to get hits in five straight games, Mikey. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Oh, man, I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Homer's in five games. That ball's got to be looking like a basketball coming in. He fouls that one back. Stays alive. It's one and two. No score just underway, top of the first. I think what was impressive about the performance on Saturday night was all three of those home runs came in two strike counts, two of them the other way, and they were not cheapies either. That's impressive stuff. The throw over to first and Cook dives back safely. Cook has mentioned four for four in stolen base attempts. Probably not going here with one of the hottest hitters in the country at the plate. You got that right. Although McKay's going to try and keep him close. Virginia always one of the best at keeping runners close. I remember my days when I was playing 
they'd pick off five, six, seven times in a row back before there were rules on the pickoff, and they do a good job of keeping runners close. Outside, two and two. Yeah, they were always one of the more aggressive at controlling the running game by just seeming to wear out base runners, forcing them back to the bag at first. McKay set in the 2-2. Way outside, that fastball took out on him, and the count is full. You see this UNC ball club down with two strikes early, finding a way to fight back, got him to a full count. Like to think they're going to start the runners here, keep the pressure. UNC's got a good thing going, and Parks Harbor swinging a hot bat. Cook goes, and that one in the air to right towards the line. Moving over here is Casey Saki. He'll make the catch. Hustling back to first and in with a dive is Cook. And there's two outs. Casey Saki with a really nice running catch. Yeah, very nice job right there by Cullen McKay. Winning that battle right there. 3-2 count. Trusting his stuff. Got Parks Harbor at the plate. Very hot hitter. You know he's hunting fastball right there. Trust the slider. Hits with it. Gets a big out. Two outs for Anthony D'Onofrio, the transfer from Quinnipiac. 16 homers a year ago, just hit his second of the season on Sunday in the cleanup spot. He takes high. It's 1 0. Very good athlete, good outfielder. He had two triples on Saturday night. That got overshadowed by Parks Harbor's performance. But the power's starting to come for the transfer. He swings and skies one. Foul territory, third base side, not a play. And the count one and one. Duffrey is a really good athlete, Devin. I mean, we were talking a little bit before the game about him as, as somebody that's exciting to watch. Yeah, he's a fun guy. And, and once again, the transfer portal, such a fun thing. And, and, and getting a guy like Don, Donofrio has been fantastic. I love how he's committed to the fastball. He's, he's done a great job hitting that all, all year long. And I love how he controls the zone. I think he's been a great fit for this UNC team, a guy that can come in and, and be a leader from day one. A couple of key transfers in this lineup, three in fact. We talk about Harbor, Alex Madera at second, the other one. Runner goes, pitches a ball, the throw goes over the head of the shortstop O'Farrell. And a nice job to back it up by the second baseman Becker. It's a stolen base. UNC on the year now, 53 stolen bases in 56 attempts. Uh, efficiency at its finest. Nice pitch to run on right there, too. Casey Cook getting to second base. It's big time stuff with two outs. A chance for UNC to dent the scoreboard first. The pitch just low, and the count is full. It's three straight three ball counts for the right hander McKay. And he's needed 20 pitches to this point and still working in the first. And he misses away and now two on, two outs. And here comes the powerful Alberto Ozuna. I like that shot right there by Cullen McKay. No need to give in there. 3 2 count. Got a base open. Righty on deck. The hot Alberto Ozuna coming up to the plate now. now. Ozuna on the year hitting 365 with eight homers. He struggled through an injury plague junior season last year, but he is back to being healthy. And he is a big power presence. This pitch outside a ball, it's 1-0. He has been unbelievable with men in scoring position. 500 batting average. He's had a lot of opportunities this year. I love how simple he is, not trying to do too much. And like you said, Mike, I, I think he's healthy this year. I love his change in approach. Big guy, doesn't have to too, try to do too much. That one grazed his arm. He convinced our home plate umpire, Brian Miller, that that was uh, hit by pitch. And now the bases are going to be loaded for Luke Stevenson, the freshman catcher. Two walks and a hit batter here for McKay in the first. Just a fastball right there that got away on him. And you know, this has been a little bit of the story of Cullen McKay. Guy with very, very great stuff. And just struggling when he gets in certain situations to slow the game down and, and really take control. And now we're going to get a 
Stevenson, the freshman catcher. He has massive pull power. First pitch. Takes a strike. It's 0-1. Like that mound visit right there. You see him go to the change up a pitch. He doesn't throw a ton. He only really throws it to lefties. Like that right there, changing up the feel of his pitches. The 0-1. Fastball strike, and they count nothing in two now to Stevenson. Stevenson, eight home runs on the year, three of them in his last two games, including a 453-foot blast on Saturday night to pitch. Swinging a drive to right, way back, and that one will one-hop against the fence. Two runs are going to score. Ozuna will be held at third. It's a two-run double for the freshman Luke Stevenson, and North Carolina has a 2-0 lead. Great piece of hitting right there by North Carolina's Luke Stevenson. 0-2 count, and this is it right here. That's a changeup right there. You do not want to ever miss that on the inner half of the plate. He misses his spot. Luke Stevenson takes advantage of it. UNC with the early lead, and this offense continues to roll. Sauke able to get over and track it down right away, and that held Ozuna at third. Now here's Gavin Gallagher, another freshman. Gallagher, the third baseman, takes low, 1-0. He is hit at the top of the lineup against lefties. He's hitting seventh today. Moving down on the order to give Honeycutt the chance at the top. You look at those numbers very loud for the freshman right-handed hitter. He swings and skies one. Shallow center racing in and making the lunging grab is Bobby Whalen, the center fielder, and the inning is over. Boaz to start, and Griffo Farrell will get ready to lead things off for Virginia. And there you get a look at the single-season all-time hits leader for the Cavaliers. And the first pitch is a ball low, and we're underway in the bottom of the first. Farrell hitting just over 300. Hit one homer all of last year. He had two opening weekend this year. He swings and fouls it away. One and one. Devin Griff O'Farrell is an important player for this upcoming draft because of all of the highly touted draft prospects. He is the surest bet to be a shortstop in professional baseball. And he lines that one into right center field, a base hit. And that's what Griff O'Farrell does. He just records base hits consistently. Yeah, he's a ball player, man. Three year starter for this Virginia ball club. I love what he does at the plate. He's an aggressive leadoff hitter. He's really ready to hit from pitch one. Sprays the ball all over the field, plays fantastic defense, and he's done a great job setting the table for this very potent UVA offense for the last three years. So leadoff man aboard, and that'll bring up Bobby Whalen, the grad transfer from Indiana. First pitch is a strike to him, 0-1. Whalen's hit second against left-handed pitching. He's been playing a couple of games a week, but he is a really valuable player in this Virginia lineup. You see it, not a ton of home run power, but he has been an on-base machine. Count as nothing in two. I mean, just to highlight this, coming into the week, they were first in the nation in batting average. They were fifth in on-base percentage, ninth in slug, third in runs scored, and first in doubles. So, like, that's what you're dealing with. And <laughs> they're one of the 11 toughest teams to strike out in the country. So not only are they hitting and hitting for a bit of power, Devin, but they just do not swing and miss. you got to look at Kevin McMullen, their hitting coach, who's coaching at third. And that's a hit-by-pitch, and the first two have reached for Virginia in the first. It's a rinse and repeat for this Virginia ball club. And, you know, you think you lose a guy like Kyle Teal, Jake Geloff, Ethan O'Donnell. Where do we go next? No problem at all. Bobby Wellen. You got Becker that pops in there. You got Henry Ford. And you know, this Virginia club, they have always done a great job of game planning, putting together great at bats. Like you said, they don't swing and miss a ton. And they're an offense that every pitching staff that faces is always stressed. First pitch to the right fielder, Casey Sauke, and that one goes to the screen. And now Virginia has the tying runs in scoring position with nobody out. See 
and Southie ahead offense. of the count. Great job right here, continuing to apply pressure. Folger Bo, Folger Boaz, young guy, right here. Most they get is one. Got to attack this strike zone. Got a dangerous hitter in Casey Salki. Got to settle in right here. Get back to the strike zone. 1 0 outside and low. It's 2 and 0. We were talking earlier. Salki is one of the more underrated players in the ACC. Just a really solid ball player, having a terrific year, hitting close to 400. And he's ahead in the count now, three and nothing. Runners get their lead from second and third. And the 3 0. Called strike. Looked like the automatic 3 0 strike in the count, three and one to Southie. How about that respect right there? 3 0 slider. <laughs> 3 1. And the count now full to the number three hitter in the Virginia lineup. Slow 2 0 North on. Carolina, last of the first. Sorry, Devin, go ahead. Slow him down on 3 0, speed him up on 3 1. Another one away. They went to the fastball 3 2. I'm assuming you're always looking fastball, right? Trying to adjust, but what are the odds you're getting another one here? I got a hunt fastball here. Breaking ball misses away, and the bases are now loaded with nobody out for Virginia in the bottom of the first. Casey Salki. Uh, that's the sign of a veteran hitter, a mature hitter up at the plate. You know he wants those RBIs that are out there and willing to pass the baton on to the fourth batter. Frank Gaines. It was the perfect analogy. You know, this is just a very talented guy that is mentally strong and, and, and is excited to, 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 to get out here and attack hitters on a Friday night, excuse me, a Thursday night in the ACC. First pitch is a strike to Henry Ford, the freshman from Charlottesville. Went to high school his last couple of years at the Baylor School in Chattanooga, Tennessee, but he is a Sandlot legend in Charlottesville, and he clubs one to deep right field, to the fence, it's a grand slam! Henry Ford the other way, and Virginia leads 4-2. Just adding to the legend, Devin. Young freshman now leading the ACC in hits. 0-1 count, gets a fastball out over the plate, shows his strength and his approach to go the other way. Big time grand slam for the freshman right here. It's the UVA offense that's used to playing from behind. And they show us right here how they respond. First pitch fouled away by Harrison Didowick. You get the oversized who's hat. <laughs> Home run props. <laughs> that one outside. Cal one and one to Didowick. Didowick actually leads this team in home runs. He's got a dozen of them. He's played center and left field this year. Very highly touted recruit out of high school. Really put it together this season and slugged well against lefties. He swings and misses. It's one and two. <laughs> That's a great shot of Ford. I wonder if he'll go and take that out to first base now. Why not? Once you put on the home run prop, you probably don't want to take it off, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Certainly isn't yet. 4 2 Virginia, bottom one. Dewick pops it up, foul, and out of play. And they got two and two to the left fielder. Well, we talked about it at the outset. These are two of the best offenses in the country. They certainly haven't disappointed so far. A 
right out of the gate, right out of the gate. We wondered if this UNC team with no midweek game was going to come in a little slow. They answered the bell with that. This UVA team doing a little bit more of what they've done all year long. Count is full to Didaway. Boaz still has not retired a batter here in the first. The payoff in the dirt. And the second walk of the inning issued by Boaz. That's what this UVA offense does. They find a way to wear you down. They stay in the zone. Folger Boaz has made a ton of great pitches in this first inning. Pitches that just missed. And you know, the strike zone all throughout college baseball has really tightened up a bit. And I think that's a big advantage to UVA. They're disciplined. They do a great job game planning. I think that they do a good job looking in certain parts of the zone. And they leave balls that are not in those zones in early counts. First pitch to Jacob Ferentz. The catcher takes a strike. 0 1. Transfer from Division III Salisbury. Riding a 14 game hit streak coming into today. Last year, he said Salisbury's single season home run mark with 14. Oh, and one to the right handed hitting catcher. You see some activity starting in the North Carolina. I have a guy from the Division Three level, and you know, this is a guy that's a great story, was, was ready for this opportunity. A guy that really had no offers coming out of high school, and you know, he's, he's, a, he's a true diamond in the rough, and he's been a big pickup for this Virginia club. Yeah, didn't have an offer from any school and went to a, an open tryout camp for unsigned seniors put on by Prep Baseball Report. And the only team that offered him was Salisbury, D3 school. He built a really strong defensive reputation there. And then last season put together a terrific offensive year. He helped lead them to the Division Three College World Series three different times, swing and a miss. He is down on strikes and the first out of the first inning for Virginia. Good response there by Folger. He's, he's gotten himself into good counts today. Just missed out over the plate to Henry Ford and, and, and paid for it. That's when he's at his best right there, commanding his fastball to his glove side, really pounding the ball in on right-handed hitters, get guys sped up a bit, and you throw the slider to the back foot. Throw to first, and the runner dives back. 4-2 Virginia in the first as Ethan Anderson stands in. Anderson, a preseason All-American, second team on D1 Baseball's list. He's gotten off to a slow start this year. He's a key bat on that College World Series team a year ago for Virginia. Catching and serving as the DH as well, DHing tonight. Looking at some of the splits, Devin, from Anderson from a year ago. Last season against left handed pitching, the switch hitter hit 339 with a slugging percentage over 600. This year, the batting average more than 100 points lower, the slugging percentage down 300 points. Swings and misses, it's 0 2. Yeah, his best swings against left handed pitching this year were. My opinion hit the other way. Coach, coach talked about it a bit. Said he looks like he's coming around the ball a little bit. He's best when he's using the big, the big part of the field. And you know that draft year idea. It's it's real, and, and you feel that pressure as you as you come into this year, especially coming off a big one. You're projected first, second round pick. You want to live up to the expectations. You know you're relied upon very big by your team, and you know you try to do too much. Coach moved him down in the lineup a bit this year to try to take some pressure off of him. Showing signs of turning the corner. One and two, the count to Anderson. He's always been a selective hitter. He is a switch hitter, and the fact that he's catching more than ever is certainly a good sign, but Virginia would love to see him put together a really strong second half to make this outstanding offensive lineup even deeper. Rick Fowler. Yeah, to think about the damage they've been doing this year without Ethan Anderson at his best. Just two home runs this year. 
a guy who was in the double digits last year, you know he's going to turn the corner. You know there's going to be a time where he's going to be back up in the top of that lineup. And you know, just off to a slow start, very talented player. The one-two. Takes inside, and it's two and two to Anderson. It's amazing, too, when you think about it. I mean, we talked a lot about the offenses here, right? Vance Honeycutt has been in a little bit of a funk, the top player on, in North Carolina's lineup. Anderson, the top offensive returner for Virginia this year, and yet both of these teams have excelled at the plate. Anderson rips that one foul down the left field line. North Carolina, 25 and four. Virginia, 23 and six. Like you said, Mike, I mean, we're doing it without their big dogs, really at their best. So. These, these ball clubs have to feel like they're in a great spot right now at this point in the season. Two and two, the count to Anderson. Swings and pops it up. Shallow right, racing in is D'Onofrio, and the right fielder makes the catch. Fires back to first, the runner back standing. There's two outs. Four two, Virginia. Here's Luke Hansen. That's a big out right there. You see him sitting at 33 pitches. You know the coaches, they got their eye on that number. Normally 30, 35 pitches is the most you want to see a guy go in, the, go, go in one inning. So he's looking to get a quick out here. Well, there is a little action still in the North Carolina pen as Hanson stands in. Hanson's been the in a bit of a platoon at third base with Eric Becker actually making the start at second. Hanson knocked in the game winner on Thursday night in a tight game against Old Dominion. Cameron Padgett getting loose. Right-hander warming. And the first pitch is hit high in the air to deep center field. Honey cut back, turns around, out of here. Just his third home run of the season. Luke Hansen makes it 6-2, Virginia. Luke Hansen, straight to the right center side of the field. Trying to go in right there, misses out over the middle. Luke Hansen puts a good swing on it, drives it out to deep center field, and this is another guy that's been a great addition in this lineup, an opportunity to play a little bit more, delivering big for UVA. Big celebration in the Virginia dugout as they put up six in the first, and here is Becker. And Henry Ford finally out of the giant hat, and Luke Hansen gets to <laughs> the 0-1 to the left-handed hitting Boaz. Strike 0 and 2. Boaz had allowed just five home runs all year in 34 and two-thirds innings. And Virginia's tagged him for a pair here, including a grand slam from Ford. Called strike three, and the inning is over. But the Cavaliers bat around. The same. Folger Boaz trying to get in on their hands. Misses out over. And UVA doing what they've been doing all year. And now Kellen McKay, as you get a look at Ford, has a 6-2 advantage here at the top of the second. There's Hanson. Fresh off that game-winning hit the other day. This is all the action we've had, and we've only played an inning so far in Charlottesville. <laughs> this is the first of three. Uh, upstairs, one and one. It's gonna be, maybe it's gonna be one of those weekends. I mean. Red hot North Carolina offense, top offense in the country, or one of the tops in Virginia. As Alex Madera, the transfer from Arcadia, Division Three school of Pennsylvania, takes outside. It's two and one. Well, let's talk a little bit about McKay here, Devin. You highlighted him at at the outset as a guy who has had a little bit of command trouble, but certainly the stuff is good enough for him to be a Friday starter in the ACC. Yeah, he's, he's got great stuff. You see the fastball, it's 91, 92, 93. 
I think it plays up a bit. It really shoots out of his hand. And really, uh, the big hit, he, he doesn't have a problem in early counts and getting to two strike counts. He runs into issues when, when he gets to those counts and he gives these hitters too good of pitches to hit. And you, know, you look at this inning right here, Virginia puts up a, a big six spot. You know, now we find ourselves in a 3-2 in, in, in count. You gotta attack these hitters. They're looking for a shutdown inning. Let your defense work. You got great stuff. Here's the payoff. Takes the inside, ball four, and the leadoff man reaches for North Carolina in the second. The switch hitting Col Colby Wilkerson the 6-2 game. The reason McKay is in the Friday role, in, in part, is because of some of the early struggles and then the injury to Jack O'Connor, the sophomore from Arlington, Virginia, had been in the Friday role through the non-conference season and then moved to the bullpen. He has now been lost for the year. Virginia is trying to find a way to fill this rotation. Their most consistent starter has been the guy going tomorrow night, Evan Blanco, who has done a really, really nice job. The sophomore left-hander from Warburton, Mass. But trying to find starters in the rest of the rotation has been a bit of a struggle for Virginia, and their offense has been able to help keep some of the pressure off of them. There's a strike, it's one and one. And Blanco right there charting pitches tonight before he faces this North Carolina lineup. He'll go head to head with freshman Jason DeCaro for North Carolina tomorrow night. Here's some of what Virginia has been dealing with from an injury standpoint this year on the mound. They have had a number of them. We're going to look at this here in a second because it is. It explains part of the reason why they have been trying to find the right mix outside of Blanco. You see Bradley Hodges, Jack O'Connor, Tommy Rolden all out for the year. The good news is they are starting to get some guys back. You saw Bryson Moore there. The change of misses low. Joe Savino, who was a key transfer from Elon, started their midweek game against Old Dominion. He threw an inning. But that's part of him building up. There's Savino sporting the resplendent mustache. <laughs> that went inside. It's three and one to Wilkerson. Oh, and Cody is the other guy that came back from injury. He'd been out with a shoulder issue, but was very good. Struck out six in two innings uh, against the Monarchs the other night. So very, very good news, at least on the injury front. And outside, ball four. And the first two have reached here against McKay in the second. That's now four walks for the right hand. Yeah. Who's one of the key relievers in this Virginia pen. The side-arming right-hander beginning to toss as well. And we're going to get a mound visit here. Six to two. First pitch. Inside, ball one. Side armors love to work the inner half of the plate. The right-handed hitters, the big thing here is looking for the fastball, pushing it way out over the plate. The 1-0. -oh. There's a strike. It's 1-1. Hungate's numbers this year actually have been better against lefties than righties. He's faced many more right-handed hitters. As Honeycutt laces one to center field, going back on it and making the catch. Shy of the track is Waylon for out number one. Tagging and heading to third is Madera. That's the approach right there. These right-handed hitters are going to look to take. UNC's got to be happy to see a swing like that out of Honeycutt. And you know, these side armors, I, I have no idea how he's better against lefties than righties. I, I think I'm <laughs> over my life against sidearm pitchers. Just never knew really where to look. And Honeycutt showing us <laughs> what it's supposed to look like. Here's Casey Cook. He walked and scored in the first. The first pitch. Oh, Left-handed hitting outfielder missed just low. It's 1-0. 
You know, the, the new trend in pro ball is guys with low arm slots who throw the ball at the top of the strike zone, right? And they have more success. Righty side armors are having more success against lefties. Hungate is not a guy that's going to live at the top of the zone. It's ground ball and rolls into right field for a base hit. Coming home to score is Madeira on his way to second is Wilkerson. RBI single Casey Cook and North Carolina gets one back. It's now 6-3 Virginia. Casey Cook right there. Beautiful piece of hit and gets a fastball up in the zone. Not trying to do too much. Shoots that 3-4 hole, gets a big RBI, and UNC once again answering the bell. This hot offense, you know, when things get rolling as an offense, you start to get a feel like, man, it doesn't matter how many runs we're down, we're always in this thing, and, and UNC's really got a good thing going right now. First pitch to Parks Harbor is a strike. Harbor flew out deep into the right field corner, his first trip. Power to all fields from the transfer from Georgia. And he crushes one to left. It's a base hit. Coming home to score is Wilkerson. Stopping at second is Cook. RBI single. Actually, did Madeira hold up there? He did. Excuse me. Wilkerson held at third. He did not get a good read on that. I was sure that he came home to score, but... Scott Forbes giving him instructions. I'm not sure if you saw something there, Devin. Yeah, you know, I think when Parks Harbor's hitting, they're not ever expecting anything to land in front of the outfielders. And, you know, with one out right there, they're down three runs. Ball's hit so hard. Gets to Didwick really quickly. Still got men in scoring position, one out. You got a left-handed hitter at the plate. And Avrio to first. Ford will take it himself. Now the run comes home, and it's a 6-4 game, and two more men move into scoring position, but a big second out. Yeah, it's a big out right there. You'll trade an out for a run. Tying runs in scoring position for Alberto Ozuna. He was hit by a pitch in the first. pitch strike it's 0 and 1 and get trying to navigate this difficult situation if he can get out of it here at least give Virginia's bats some room to tack on Zuna on the ground to third charging Hanson double clutches throws to first in time to get him and the inning is open to get the last three outs after 26 pitches to get to that point. Yeah, the story of this game so far is, has been free passes, walks, hit by pitches, and, and eight, you know, eight of the runs that have scored tonight have, have scored via the free pass. So uh, looking for a quick inning here, come in, attack the strike zone. Like you said, he's already at 39 pitches now and can't afford another big inning. And they got it all started. The leadoff man, Griff O'Farrell, singled and scored on the grand slam from Henry Ford in the first. The 1 1 is a strike. And to Folger Boaz has been the Friday starter, in this case, Thursday starter, all season for North Carolina. He was their top arm in the fall, he was the top arm in scrimmages. Farrell drives that one to right. A long run for D'Onofrio, who makes a great sliding catch for the first out. What a play by the right fielder. D'Onofrio with the big jump. He's a really good-looking player right here, and this is a huge out. It's a great jump off that ball right there. Big out right there for UNC, and that's what Folger Boaz is looking to do. Get ahead of these hitters, hit your spots, let your defense work. It's why he's had success so far as he faces Bobby Whalen. This is low. It's one and over. Boaz moved into this Friday role because of an injury to Jake Knapp. He was supposed to be the Friday starter for North Carolina this year. He is out for the season. So Boaz moved to Friday, and their Saturday starter is also a true freshman in Jason DeCaro. Now, the difference is Boaz is 
about 19 years old, and I'm going to make you feel really old right here. You ready to feel really old, Devin? Oh, give it to me. I just dyed my beard. Hyder <laughs> up the alley. Right center. Heike dives. He's got it. Wow, what a play by the reigning defensive player of the year. Two outs. UNC Ball Club, the two fastest guys on this team, two of the faster guys in the ACC, and Vance Honeycutt. This is why he's so exciting, a guy that saves a ton of runs. 6.2 defensive runs saved this year. That's good for top five in the country and makes a big play right there. Incredible jump and a great diving catch. And now a swing and a miss by Sauke. It's 0-1. You see the young Folger Boaz. This is what they need out of their defense. That's how you get into a rhythm right here. It's looking for a quick inning. Off to a great start. Yeah, Boaz, 19. DeCaro, the, the freshman uh, Saturday starter, will turn 18 in two weeks. That's right. He's 17 years old. <laughs> Half my age. <laughs> that one ripped foul. It's really unsettling when you see 2006 on a starter. April of 2006 on a starter of the East. <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, these young guys, man, in baseball, they're getting better and better earlier and earlier. The one, two. Outside. They count two and two now to Sauke. Boaz was a terrific two-sport athlete in high school. He was a quarterback as well. His brother actually was quarterback at North Carolina, back up there for a couple of years, and has just transferred to Stephen F. Watt. Entire college career so far. 6-4 Virginia as Hengate back to work against Luke Stevenson, who knocked in a pair of runs. So you get a look at another player on that leaderboard, Griffo Farrell, the shortstop. We are really fortunate to see the best defensive center fielder in college baseball and the best defensive shortstop this weekend. For as much as we've talked about offense with these two teams, those are things that make both of them special. And, you know, we're going to talk plenty about Honeycutt throughout the night, Devin, as you see the shift in, uh, switching with two strikes on Stevenson. The, the thing about Honeycutt that's so impressive to me is he has not had a great season offensively, and especially in the last several weeks. But the defense continues to be exceptional. Yeah, that, that's what you want out of out, out of your best players. And you know, the really good ones, they have the ability to shut off the offense. And when they grab their glove, everything that happened on the offensive side is out the window. And, and you need that when you think about your center fielder and your shortstop, two of the most primary defensive positions on the field. Farrell steady as they come at shortstop and you know, players on the U.S. national team last summer when they were uh, getting the Team USA together in, in Cary, North Carolina, almost all of them raved about Griffo Farrell as a teammate and as a player. And, you know, scouts can look at him and, and listen, oh, Farrell's going to get dinged probably for a little bit of a lack of power. He obviously has tremendous bats and ball skills. But when you start to hear every teammate say, that guy's the guy, it should mean something. Yeah, it does. Stevenson pops it up. Shallow left of Farrell will give way to Diddlewick who makes the catch one out. Yeah, you're, you're spot on, Mike. And you know, the respect that he gets from his teammates and to think about a bunch of college guys that come together to represent the United States you know guys that haven't all got to see him play a ton and in that short period of time to to have all the best players in the entire country raving about you that that, that truly does say something I think that Griffo Farrell um, will be a big leaguer one day and, and and it's hard to say that about guys that are in college because of the climate takes but when you got a sure-handed shortstop, I like to call them two-out shortstops, you know, you, you, you they're, they're just so hard to find. And, and I think his power will truly come. Uh, you know those big league baseballs, they do seem to fly a little bit further, and guys throw a little bit harder, and for some reason, balls just travel better in big leagues' parks. So uh, I think he's a complete shortstop that uh, 
Yeah, I'd like to see him. Uh, I'd, 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 li I'd like to see him in the big leagues here pretty soon one day. Two out shortstop. I like that term. That means. Yeah, man. Two out shortstop. That means as soon as the ball's hit, the manager goes, he's out. And then about five seconds later, he hears the umpire say, out. Two out shortstop, <laughs> baby. Got to have it. <laughs> what a do the count. Gavin Gallagher, the freshman, 0 for 1 tonight. Virginia leads North Carolina 6-4 in the top of the third. And he misses in. It's 2-2. Two two. Well, I think that goes to, you know, we talked, started that conversation by showing the highlight from Vance Honeycutt tonight. As much as he has struggled offensively, scouts are going to rave about his defense, and he'll still go very high in the draft because of that. And at the very least, has a chance to be a really good defensive center fielder. When you think about guys like the career, like someone like Harrison Bader has had, who has some power, but really is known for covering a ton of ground and being a great defender. Those are incredibly valuable players in professional baseball. They help you win games. Fouls it off. You played your big league career in Toronto. They had one of the all-time greats in center field there for a number of years before you got there. Devon White, who was maybe the smoothest center fielder that's played in the last 50 years. Oh, Devo, go glove Devo. He'll let you know too. <laughs> Top foul. Really? He wasn't afraid to squawk about the fact that he was one of the all-time best. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, really, you can't really say much back. <laughs> oh, Devo. And get back to work and the payoff. That foul. Boy, he just keeps burying pitches in on the hands of Gallagher. Not sure how many... Low slot guys, Gavin Gallagher saw at the high school showcase circuit. But he's getting a steady diet, putting together pretty good at bat against a very good one in Hungate here. 3 2. Inside, ball four. What a good at bat from the freshman. That's incredible stuff right there. Game from Blacksburg. That's a very important series for both teams. Wake Forest, the number one team to open the year off to a slow start in conference play. Virginia Tech has been dynamite to this point. This will be their toughest test this season so far. Pitch, this is outside to Alex Madeira. Have you seen Virginia Tech yet? I, I haven't seen them, but I, I know it's it's... It's what it always seems to be with Virginia Tech, man. They could always really hit, and, and it looks like they got a pretty good pitching staff up there to go with it. They do always play good defense. And, and I tell you, Blacksburg is a is a tough place to play. I mean, when I think about the toughest places to play in all the ACC, my one trip to, to, to Virginia Tech was tough. They just seemed to, to really rally together up, up, up there at Virginia Tech. And, uh, it's a complete ball club, and, and they got an angry Wake Forest team coming in that's super talented that hasn't quite played up to expectations. Chopper to the right side. Ford has it. Underhands to first, and Hungate can't get there in time. Madera safe. And North Carolina has a rally with one out here in the third down a pair. That's why you play the game. That's why you get down the line right there. Ball chopped right off home plate. Love it over at first base by Henry Ford. And you see Huntgate just stop short of the bag. That's one of the toughest angles. One of the hardest PFP drills right there that you run as a pitcher when the first baseman has to come in. And you see Alex Madera getting down the line for an infield single. It looked like Ford may have had just a little trouble getting that ball out of his glove. It's an infield hit. And now two on for Wilkerson who takes a strike. And that situation right there, you like to see the pitcher just get to the bag. Get to the bag. The first thing your priority in your mind is, I got to get to the bag. I'm not trying to catch it and feel for it. Get to the bag as quick as you can, and then get out of there. It's nothing in two to Wilkerson.
Switch hitter batting left handed in a key spot here. Tying runs aboard top of the third. Off the plate. One and two. We've already had a ton of action. Terrific defense. Big home runs. And this is just the first third of the first game of this series. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a great one right here. The one two. Chop to third and foul. Hansel will glove it and foul ground. Hokerson just trying to fight that one off. Chopped in the ground. You don't see many guys who can pull that off anymore, do you? Who have the hand eye coordination to be able to hit that chopper? That looked like it was almost intentional to beat it into the ground. Yeah, just trying to find a way to battle with two strikes. And UNC, they, they've been great as well this year with two strikes. And you know, not trying to do too much, trying to find a way to just put the ball in play, cover the whole plate. Upstairs, it's two and two to Wilkerson. Wilkerson, best known his first couple of years at North Carolina for his glove. This year, he has been a more of an offensive presence. He struggled a bit defensively. Two and two the count. Runners get their lead at first and second, the pitch. Swinging a drive to right center field. That one will get down and go all the way to the wall. One run is home. Another man being waved around third. The throw goes to third. Wilkerson in with a dive, a triple, and we're tied at six. That's uh, big time right there. I think this all was set up by Gavin Gallagher. Sees a ton of pitches. Gets Hungate a bit tired. Alex Madeira puts the ball in play, and then Kobe Wilkerson, you talked about it, just chopping a ball and finding a way to, to get the bat to the ball. And then you see a huge hit right there, taking advantage of a mistake with two strikes. Big two-out triple right there by UNC. And Kobe Wilkerson, you talked about it. He's been much better offensively like right this year, coming in big right there. First pitch is a strength advance honeycut, nothing and one for Wilkerson, his first three base hit of the season. And now all five Virginia walks have come home to score, and North Carolina has the go-ahead run at third. Honeycutt's 0 for 2. Swing and a miss and a hanger. It's nothing and two. See the infield back right here. Trying to find a way to put this ball in play. And you know, UNC tonight, they've done a great job controlling the strike zone. They've done a great job this inning with two strikes. Got to shorten up, find a way to get the ball to go forward. Swing and a miss. Honeycutt down on strikes. He is 0 for 3, and we're in the third inning. Two outs. A big second out. That's a big time pitch right there by Hungate. Teased them on the outer edge. Perfectly located pitch. And you know, right on right, that's a tough pitch to get to. It's Casey Cook has been on base twice. In fact, Honeycutt is the only batter in the North Carolina lineup who has not reached safely today. We're in the third. <laughs> that's incredible. I don't hear that too much. No. I mean, if you told me that was the case over the course of the game, I'd be like, yeah, you know, that, that happens. But we, we are in the top of the third inning. Strike, it's one of one. And North Carolina has done this all with out hitting the ball out of the ballpark tonight. Cook lines that one into shallow left. It's a base hit. It'll give the Tar Heels the lead, seven to six. Casey Cook looking to drive in runs all year long. Comes up big, two out hitting, wins ball games. 1-1 one, one count, gets a ball on the outer edge. And he's always been a guy that does a great job of putting the ball in play. Not a guy that tries to do a ton. See a big uptick in home runs this year. I just think that's more of taking advantage of mistakes, but a beautiful piece of two out hitting right there. It'll bring up Parks Harbor for Cook. It's the fourth straight multi-hit game he's had. All three games against uh, Wake Forest last weekend in Winston-Salem, he had multiple hits, including two homers in the opener off of Chase Burns. 
Wake Forest stud right-hander. Now the count, 1-0 to Parks Harbor. 7-6 from North Carolina. We've had a game, and we're not even halfway through the third inning. There's a lot left in this one. Do you want to play the seven runs will not win this game? <laughs> game right now? Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like the offenses are ready today and the count three and oh to Harbor. Harbor will certainly turn it loose if he gets something in the middle of the plate. Up high, ball four, another walk. UNC this inning done such a great job controlling the zone. And you know, these at bats are never fun against side armors. Hungate, a guy that's been throwing the ball great. UNC just doing a nice job putting them in their zones, looking for pitches to start in certain locations and letting them have everything else. Just, just a great offensive approach so far tonight. Drew Dickinson is the veteran ball club, and, and these guys have logged a lot of at-bats. And you see it's, it's, it's almost a team approach. And when you get an entire team to buy into one approach, it makes it very difficult for these pitchers. D'Onofrio into center field, a base hit. Another run is going to come home. An RBI single for D'Onofrio. It's 8-6 North Carolina. There you go right there. Looking middle, middle. Gets a pitch right in the heart of the zone. Doesn't try to do too much against a tough pitcher and a sinker. Drives it right back through the box. And D'Onofrio joining in on this hit party. This UNC offense is scorching hot. And, and when you really get going as an offense and... Things start to carry over from game to game. Like I said earlier, it's it's a ton of fun, and you never feel like you know, any deficit is too much. Blake Barker, the transfer from Seton Hall, up for the second time tonight as the first pitch is a strike to Ozuna. It's 0-1. Ozuna grounded to third to end the second. He's the ninth man to come to the plate here for Carolina in the third. They've scored four times. Takes a strike, it's nothing in two. Hungate entered in the second inning. He is already at 47 pitches. Tried to check his swing. He held up, snap throw behind the runner at first and back safely is D'Onofrio. Hungate wanted that one right there. The one two. Foul back. Well, that was a pitch to hit for Ozuna. Just a little tardy. Yeah, you see tonight with Hungate, I, I think he's done a nice job of throwing the ball in under the hands of righties and, and, and trying to get these righties to speed up a bit. That's the key when you face a side armor. UNC just doing a very nice job of staying in their approach and not trying to do too much. Inside, it's two and two. Well, I think it's a great point. I mean, you know, Hungate's been so effective because he is funky. Boy, they have really been in the middle of the field and the offside of the field. And Azuna uh, slings and skies with the left center field. Deep into a one hop over the wall for a ground rule double. It'll knock home a run. Stopping at third is D'Onofria. He will have to head back. It's 9 6 North Carolina. Fortunate right there for UVA that that ball popped out of the. The park for a ground rule double where they would have two runs right there, but just a great at bat right there by Osuna. 
very mature, sees a ton of sliders, understands that that's Hungate's best pitch. Probably starting to look for... It's to soak up some innings here as Luke Stevenson will be the first to face it. And the catcher chops one into center field. A base hit and two runs are going to come home to score. Luke Stevenson, two for three with four knocked in tonight. It's 11 to three, Carolina. Jumping on the first pitch right there, Luke Stevenson. I love it. Young hitter knows he's facing a lefty. Guy that's got a really great slider. Looks for a fastball early in the count. Sees the left side of the field wide open. Hits a ball right back up the box, finds a hole. And this UNC offense, I tell you, it doesn't matter. When, when you get going and, and, and you feel great as an offense and you're as hot as these guys, Max Scherzer could be on the mound. And truly, when you get going, you do feel like you have a chance to hit anybody. And uh, UNC's really got it going on. Carolina had a 2-0 lead in this. Virginia scored six in the first. Carolina's been on a 9-0 run. It, normally when we talk about 9-0 runs in Carolina, it's on the hardwood. <laughs> There's a strike. It's one and two. You can't just call a timeout here, though. That's the problem is you got to get the out. Parker misses. It's two and two. Swing and a miss. Gallagher down on strikes, and the inning is over. 11 men come to the plate for Carolina. Pointed out that the highest total for combined runs in a game between Carolina and Virginia is 30. Now, these guys have a long history. That game was played in 1903. So we have a chance to see a record-setting performance tonight as Hobb oh, misses low. It's 1-0 to Casey Salky. Salky, excuse me, this is Harry, Henry Ford. I can't even read my lineup card. <laughs> this is Henry Ford, who hit a grand slam in the first inning. I should also know that because Henry Ford is six foot five inches, and Sauke is not. That one really foul. That's what it do. This is what Ford did in the first inning. Got a pitch out over the plate and didn't miss. And now this freshman has been fantastic. This is what Virginia. This is what they come to expect in these freshman bats that come in. Chip swing, no swing. Got two and two. You know, it's it's so hard to, to to hit in the ACC, even once you log a ton of at bats, and you see all these young guys as freshmen coming in and having big success. So impressive. Oh, gets him looking at a breaking ball, and that's the first out here in the third. Now, very quietly. North Carolina pitching is set down five in a row. That's a good looking breaking ball right there, Aiden Haw. And you know, these, both of these teams have done a good job getting guys in two strike counts. And, and we got to credit the hitters because they've done a nice job laying off marginal pitches. Aiden Howe coming in, Hall coming in right now, doing a nice job commanding that pitch with two strikes and, and getting the big strikeout. The 1 0. Low, it's two and nothing. Hauk back to work. Again, a real key member of this bullpen for North Carolina. Low, it's three and oh. They have four guys that they really trust, and I think that's part of their plan. As much as we talked earlier about the freshmen. On weekends for them. It's their veteran bullpen that's really the key. A four-pitch walk here. The UNC's bullpen's been awesome all year long. And this is a this, this is a complete ball club. I, I look back, think back to UNC last year. I thought they had talent all over the field. Really, it's a lot of the same names. These two freshman starters that have been able to pop in this rotation provide a ton of length. 
have the ability to get deeper into games and pass the, the baton to the bullpen. And right, obviously the offense is beginning to explode and, and showing what they can do. And, and this is a UNC club and truly an ACC that you, you got no idea what this is going to look at uh, at the end of the year, but, but there's no doubt it's loaded. That one to the screen will send the runner into scoring position as Didaway advances. Now they count one and one interference. Out waits and the one one. Lined into center field, Honeycutt on the run, makes the catch for out number two. And hustling back is Didowick. Two outs, another two outs, man at scoring position for Ethan Anderson. Switch hitter batting left handed, takes a strike. Nice running catch by Vance Honeycutt. Maybe the degree of difficulty culty a little bit lower. The one in the second inning, but excellent play. Out the way, it's nothing in two. Hauk doing a nice job using that change up right there. And, uh, he's been a great arm really all year long. I, I, I love how he gets on top of the ball, drives it down in the zone. And you know, when you think about hitting off an iron mic pitching machine, now, these are always very, very tough at bats. Fastballs that really take off to the top of the zone, do a nice drive driving it down. And when you can use your changeup off that tunnel, it's a really tough guy to face. One and two, the count to Anderson, who fly to right his first trip. That was batting right-handed. He's now hitting left-handed. Pitch in the dirt. Knocked down by Stevenson, two and two. Freshman catcher there going down to one knee here. And the pitch. Good stop. Breaking ball in the dirt and the count is full. Stevenson's a guy worth watching too because I, I'm really impressed by what he has done defensively as a freshman. He's an excellent receiver. Three two. Swing and a miss. 18, and Vance Honeycutt is due up third in his inning. It'll be the leadoff man's fourth plate appearance of the night. And the first pitch is dumped into left field by Alex Madera. A leadoff single is the number eight hitter is on base for the third time this evening. The hitting's contagious, and this ball club has been as hot as any ball club in the country. Just 21 home runs before this nine game streak where they've ran off a 30 piece and uh, you can tell that they're all overconfident in a, in a great way and that's exactly what you want out of your hitters. First pitch to Wilkerson switch hitter batting right handed this time takes outside one and oh. Ten hits already for North Carolina. The eight and nine hitters in their order. Are three for three with a pair of walks they haven't been retired. Wilkerson fouls that one off to the right. I mean, that's a pretty good way to run up some crooked numbers, right? <laughs> Is to get your bottom of the order on base. Hey, you got that right. You got that right. And yeah, it's it's a complete offense. It, there's there's no doubt about it. Their their game plans seem to be growing stronger and stronger as every game goes on. And you can tell there's a real plan that goes behind every pitcher they face. There's a strike. It's one and two. Trying to settle things down for Virginia here. Wilkerson fouls it away. Lots of contact tonight. Walks. Hit by pitches. Only two strikeouts for Carolina's hitters. And this is the 27th man to come to the plate tonight. 
first. And back standing is Madeira. Swing and a miss. There's a strikeout. Three, the only Carolina hitter who has not reached base tonight. First pitch misses low. It's 1-0. Coach Forbes talked about as an offense this year as they came in. They wanted to do a better job controlling the strike zone, cutting down on Chase, and you know, a lot of that comes with simply mentality. Hey, guys, listen, this is what we're going to do against this pitcher. If we can all buy in, we'll stress pitchers, we'll get into that bullpen early, especially on a Thursday night with two games behind it. And, and you could tell the, the, the true focus, and, and, and this offense has an identity. It's we're going to get good pitches to hit, and we're going to put good swings on them. And uh, they've really showed that off tonight. One and two now the count on Honeycutt. Well, Forbes is, uh, looked like he was asking the umpires whether or not Barker was coming to a full set there. Which Forbes <laughs> trying to get free base here. It's a long hold. Now they got him picked off. Throw down to second, Madeira's out. That's the second out. Great call right there. Seen a lot of pickoffs tonight. You know, Alex Madeira could run. Textbook right there. Two outs, nobody on. 11-6 North Carolina, the one-two to Honeycutt, fouled away. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Then he cut down on strikes. Parker settles things down. It's the first scoreless frame for North Carolina. Coach of the Virginia Cavaliers, Brian O'Connor. Boy, your offense got going early on. Some big swings. What about the job Luke Hansen has done for you at the bottom of your lineup? Uh, he's done a nice job. He's done a great job all year. He's a he's a really good third baseman, and he certainly put a charge into that ball and, and did a nice job, and he's leading us off here, hopefully, to get us uh, started. Coach Barker looks really good right now out there. Are you looking for him to eat up a lot of innings in the middle of this ball game? No, we're not. That's him. He, typically, he's a two inning max guy, so we'll go to uh, you know somebody here in the, in, in the next inning, and, and uh, you know hopefully we can just throw up a couple of zeros. We've had the kind of offense to where we've been able to come back, and we're still in this ball game. All right, Coach. Thanks so much. Thanks, man. Brian O'Connor, the head coach at Virginia, joining us. I know it's uh, tough when your team is struggling a little bit on the mound especially if you're a pitching guy like Coach Oak is, that, um, to do this, so we appreciate the time. But, boy, their, their offense is explosive. That's the part that we, we've already seen tonight. It's just been a couple of innings since we've seen it get going. And you know, much like what we've seen with North Carolina, Virginia's bottom of the lineup creates traffic for the top. This scoreboard can change very quickly. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and they've trailed in 19 of their 29 games. So... Unfortunately for Virginia, this is a situation that they're very familiar in. But fortunately for Virginia, uh, they've, they've come back and won 14 of those games. So uh, being familiar in this situation, knowing that you're always in the ball game, uh, has to be a good feeling. Tried to hold up. He went around. Hanson down on strikes. Third strikeout for Hawk. Leadoff man gone in the Virginia fourth. Bring up here. That seems to be a common thread around the conference this year. Miami has had a ton of comebacks. Clemson has had a ton of comebacks. This is a league this year that is, I mean, this is like peak heavyweight boxing. Teams are just throwing haymakers at each other every weekend. Yeah, and, and I, I just think that this conference really... You know, top to bottom, and then and then when you add in the transfer portal and the fact that all these young players are are so advanced at such a young age, it's it's you know, it's the recipe for a lot of offense. And I think for a little bit in baseball, you know, offense was kind of running away, and you know it's back full throttle now. And you know, like you said, it is all over the conference. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is a highly offensive game right now in college. But I, I mean, from a fan standpoint. 
I'll tell you, I don't mind it because that threat of the three-run homer is constantly lurking, right? Up and down the lineup. And there is that chance to get back in the game. And I think the other point is, it, it, you kind of hit on this, and it's not just the transfers, but the freshmen and the guys who've grown up in the ACC as Becker sends that the other way and out of here. Solo home run for Eric Becker, his first of the year. And it's now an 11 to seven ball game. Eric Becker, beautiful piece of hitting right there. Uh, that's this UVA offense. That's how things get spark right there. A guy who's been really great out over the plate all year long gets to a 3-1 count, hunting a fastball. Young man driving the ball out to left field. And this, this is a guy getting a chance to play tonight with, with Henry Godbout being out and uh, putting together a really, really nice year and uh, answering the bell. And was robbed of extra bases on a great sliding catch by Anthony D'Onofrio in right field his last time. This guy's that one to right. D'Onofrio's got a beat on it and get the catch two outs. And bring up Bobby Whalen, who's 0 for 1. I, you know, I just wanted to finish this thought, Devin, because we were talking about the quality of, of offenses in this league and the teams that come back. Covering college baseball nationally, we get a chance to see teams from all over conferences. This year's ACC, and the ACC is always a good conference, in my mind is particularly strong. This is a really good year for this conference. And while people are going to look at the ERAs for teams and say, well, what's going on? A lot of it has to do with the offensive talent that's in the league. I think if you were to put, certainly, these teams in, say, the Big 12 or the Pac-12 right now, they would be very successful. But they can compete at the top of the SEC at this moment as well. Those two teams, the difference between them is not very big. And that, to me, is one of the keys. I mean, these, are, these are, in a lot of respects, not exact, but 28 of maybe the top 35 or 40 teams in the country are playing in these two leagues this year. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. I mean, the, the ACC is a conference that has always been, you know, great. And they have always played at least outwardly second fiddle to the SEC. And you know, I, I, I think that this, this conference is, is continually growing, continually getting better. And, and I agree with you. I, I think that the top of the ACC fits right along with the top of the SEC. And they're going to have to win championships to, to, to back up that statement. Um, but there's no doubt that the ACC is absolutely loaded. Sauke takes low, ball one. Sauke with seven home runs on the year. Virginia with three homers tonight. All seven of their runs have scored on home runs. North Carolina has 11 runs without a long ball. So going to miss. It gets away from Stevenson, but not far enough for the runner to advance. I believe if I wanted to go into the broadcaster's cliche handbook, we would call this a contrast in styles tonight offensively. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Here's the one, but I won't say it. In the dirt again, runner takes off for second. Stevenson's throw, not in time. Great base running right there. Virginia ball club, very good with two outs. Got Casey Salki at the dish. Adding a little pressure, reading the dirt ball right there. Well, Stevenson did not locate it right away. That was still a strong throw. Now a run in scoring position. That one in the dirt and the count three and one to Salke. Well, the last thing you want to do if you're Hauk is walk Salke ahead of Henry Ford, who's already hit a grand slam tonight. You gotta be There's careful Ford. in this situation right here. Three one count, gotta make your best pitch. Down low, ball four. Back-to-back -back walks 
And now here is Ford, and he certainly has the power to make this a one-run game. And he sure does, and this is how Virginia do does it. They get two outs, find a way to scrap a walk, back, backed up by another walk, and then Henry Ford here threatening. And Brian Gaines is going to come out and pay a visit. 41 runs knocked in already for the freshman, just past the halfway point of the season. The first pitch to the slugger in the dirt, 1 0. Big spot right here, UVA trying to grab a little momentum back on their side, and this is what they do. They continue to prick you and prick you and prick you. They make them feel you, they force you into good hitters' counts, and how trying to. To, to, to make his best pitch right here. In the dirt, gets away from Stevenson for a second, but the runners hold, and it's 2-0. Oh. Wait, Hauk has gone heavy off-speed, heavy breaking balls, but he's not been able to land anything in the zone. And you wonder if this is the moment, Devin, that he's got to come with a fastball, and if so, this is not the guy you want to leave one in the middle of the plate to. No doubt. The 2-0. Breaking ball misses away. And a count three and nothing. It's a good looking pitch right there. Hawk's gonna want that one right there. Has the courage to go 2-0 breaking ball. Doesn't get the call. Three balls, no strikes. Two outs, two on. Virginia down four. Hit on the ground to second. Gobbled up by Madera. He'll sling to first, inning over. How gets Casey Cook will lead things off. He's been up th three times, been on base three times. First pitch to strike. Lefty Barker in. Came into this game in the third inning and continues. He's done a very nice job helping to settle this down. Swing and a miss. It's nothing at two. Blake Barker. 6 1 junior. Pitch. The outside, it's one and two. Not anything else. Blake Parker can be like, hey, I got Casey Cook to swing and miss at a pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the one two. Swing and a miss. He got him on strikes. Fourth strikeout for Parker tonight. Yeah, it's a wonderfully executed pitch right there. Casey Cook swinging a hot bat. Teases him off the outer edge with the fastball. That's really jumping out of his hand tonight. Blake Barker has done a great job. These have been two very important innings that he has found himself pitching in, and, and he's trying to bridge this game, trying to keep UNC, UNC stuck with 11 runs and, and, and knowing that that offense that they have behind them can come back at any time. Parks Harbor bats one for two with a walk. The ACC player of the week hits it in the air to right coming in. Sauke has it two outs. There's Anthony D'Onofrio. Sauke there checking his positioning card. Rio stands in. He's reached base safely in all three plate appearances, and he bounces to second, and that is a very quick one, two, three inning. Good Parker. We are halfway through this one with North Carolina leading Virginia 11 to coach. You have gotten into your A relievers very early in this game. How important is the opening game of any ACC series in your mind? Yeah, they're important. Um, you know, you want to get that momentum. Obviously, if you can win the first game of a series, it gives you that momentum for sure. Coach, not so much the results for me tonight, but but the game plan at the plate has been absolutely fantastic. Is this something that you guys preach? Yeah, I mean, Coach Weirs does a great job with our guys, um, you know, about getting their A swings off. And if, if you get behind, no big deal. Just keep having good at bats and pass it on to the next one. We did a good job of that, but we got to do a better job against this lefty. He's been throwing it pretty good. Right, Coach, we appreciate the time. Best of luck tonight. Thank you, guys.
Thanks, Coach. Forbes, the head coach at North Carolina, joining us. Harrison Didowick leads off for Virginia in the bottom of the fifth. Cavaliers trailing by four. Didowick on the ground to third, and that one eats up. Gallagher and ends up in shallow center. Leadoff man aboard for Virginia in the fifth. Sometimes one of the hardest balls to field is balls that aren't hit hard and balls that are hit off the end of the bat have a ton of spin and you, you see Gallagher right there try to just curl up, keep it in front of him and, and, and ball squibs off him. But I tell you, those sometimes are truly the toughest balls and, and really they're balls that you want to just play aggressively. Here's Ferentz. It's an error on Gallagher. The first pitch is a strike to Ferentz. Nothing in one. Gallagher, the third baseman for North Carolina tonight, had played a little bit of outfield early in the season. They have been using the veteran Jackson Vanderbreek late in games at third base defensively for him. Vanderbreek was a starter for North Carolina last year. It's still a transition. He's a really impressive young player. And, and this is, listen, third base is not an easy position to play, Devin. It's at your first go round at this level, it's tough. That one under the glove and down into the left field corner. That's going to start the merry go round. And Virginia will have runners at second and third. Nobody out. Jacob Ferentz continuing that hot bat here in ACC play, coming up with a big hit. And that ball will always find you crazy how that happens. UVA once again finding ways to keep pressure on Carolina. 15 game hitting streak for Ferentz. And now Virginia threatening here in the fifth. They're down four. Here's Ethan Anderson, 0 for 2. Takes a breaking ball in the dirt, 1 and 0. Devin, you mentioned earlier, Anderson is off to a slow start this year, but starting to put it together from the left side, and it's power the other way that is really the key for him. Yeah, and, and, and really good run producers, oftentimes these are the situations where they do break out. He has the ability to slow the game down, look for the pitch he wants to hit. Hits it on the ground to first. Harbor will race to the bag for the out, but a run comes home, and the other runner moves up to third. It's a... RBI ground out in an 11-8 game. That's a great job right there by Ethan Anderson. Gets a good pitch to hit, hunting something up in the zone, slowing the game down. Knows the infield's back. Not only does he get the RBI, but he gets the run into third base with less than two outs. So now a key at bat to try and get this to a two-run game for Luke Hansen. He had a two-run home run back in the first. He struck out swinging in his first at bat against How because the first pitch bounces up there. 1 0. Oh. Boy, Stevenson has been really challenged by Hauk bouncing a number of pitches. He's done a really nice job staying in front of most of them. Yeah, I've been so impressed by him tonight defensively. And you know, there's no position that it's harder to roll into the ACC as a freshman in. And jump into a role and, and, and catcher. And, and he's been absolutely fantastic. You can tell that the pitchers love working with him. You can tell that they have a ton of trust to bounce balls with guys on third base. And, and he's done a really nice job. He's going to be one heck of a player for Carolina. One and one, the count to Hansen. Gee, with a man at third and one out. That went way outside. It's two and one. in the bullpen. Mateus getting loose. The relief ace for North Carolina. Pitch. Outside of the count. Three and one. Such a great take right there. He's laid off some really tough breaking balls. You can see the game plan coming in here. Trying to make my best pitch. Knows there's an open base. Can still play for the double play. Hanson hunting something up in the zone right here. 3-1. Takes inside ball four, and the tying run will come to the plate here in the fifth for Virginia. Great at bat right there. Not trying to do too much. Understands the role that he's in right there. And 
Got Eric Becker, Eric Becker behind him, swinging a hot bat, left the yard, last at bat. Lays off that 3-1 fastball that's in off the plate, and then, like you said, UVA is continuing to provide that pressure. First pitch. It hit him. And now the bases are loaded, and the lineup turns over for Griff O'Farrell. Goes to the slider first pitch and Eric Becker hangs in there takes it and offense offense man this this Virginia team we, we say it time and time again it's like every inning you just got a feeling they're going to be back in this thing and sure enough they got their leader at the plate Griffo Farrell the base is loaded. They've already hit one grand slam tonight pitch in the dirt to Farrell it's one and oh. Virginia as a team, including that Grand Slam, 16 for 41 this year with the bases loaded. That's a lot of bases loaded opportunities. They have their best contact man at the plate, one of the toughest of the nation to fan in O'Farrell. The 1-0. There's a strike, really well-located fastball. It's 1-1. The 1-1. One, one. Foul back. It's 1-2. and two. Nice response right here by Mateus attacking with the fastball. Been mentioning that cutter. It's been a great addition to his arsenal and got to believe it's a pitch he's going to want to go to right here. The 1-2. O'Farrell in the air, right center field, Honeycutt on the run, now over is D'Onofrio, he'll make the catch. Tagging and coming home is the runner from third, it's a sacrifice fly for Griff O'Farrell, and Virginia has cut the deficit to two, it's 11 to nine. And Mateus decides to stick with the fastball there, well located at the top of the zone, but Griff O'Farrell, beautiful job right there with two strikes. Trying to put the ball in play, drives the ball to right field, gets a big sack fly and an RBI. And Virginia down two, men on the corner with two outs. And Hansen went to third on that fly out, and now here is Bobby Whalen. Whalen on base twice tonight. He also was robbed of extra bases on a great diving play by Vance Honeycutt. First pitch low, 1 0. Oh. There's Honeycutt. Made a sensational play in the second inning. Here's the set. And the 1-0. Lined into right center field. It'll fall in for a base hit. Coming home to score is Hanson. It's 11-10. Straight away right as that one dumped in over the second baseman. And now the tying and go ahead runs are aboard for Virginia. Textbook Virginia Cavaliers two out hitting. Oftentimes you look back at a baseball game and you look to two out hittings, and oftentimes the team that performed better with two outs is a team that ends up winning. But just a beautiful job of hitting right there. Well located fastball in the inner half of the plate, stays inside the ball and sticks to his strength. Flips the ball in the right field for a big RBI. Now here's Salki. Casey Salki takes high 1 0. Hitless tonight, but he's walked and been. Now walked twice, excuse me. Salki hitting nearly 400 this season coming into the night. He takes high, it's 2 0. Henry Ford, who's already hit one grand slam in this game, is on deck for Virginia. Mateus set. The 2-0. Lined into right field, going back to Nofria will make the catch. And the inning is Osuna, Luke Stevenson, and Gavin Gallagher. First pitch to the right-handed hitting Osuna outside, 1-0. If you're just joining us, Virginia scored six times in the first. They had a 6-2 lead at the end of one. 
And then Carolina scored the next nine. Virginia's gotten back into it, and Ozuna sends that one into center field, and it falls in for a leadoff single. Burr Ozuna, leadoff base hit here for North Carolina. They'll bring up Luke Stevenson, who's knocked in four of these 11 Carolina runs. UNC looking to grab a little bit of momentum back for this club, and... You said it earlier, Mike. You said seven runs wasn't going to be enough. Well, <laughs> here we are at 11. What do you Is think? Is 11 enough, enough tonight? Uh, <laughs> I'll let you answer. <laughs> I mean, this is this is remarkable to me because this is not a night that feels like it should be conducive to offense. I'll take you a little inside the, uh, <laughs> the uh, production tonight. When we were talking to Scott Forbes before we had him on in the last inning, the first thing he said was, I am so cold. <laughs> <laughs> and I he I mean, caught earlier, but Vance Honeycutt sticking his hand in his pocket, in back pocket in center field. It is a bitter night. I, having lived in Virginia, I know exactly what tonight feels like. It's not where you want to be outside. It's uh, much no better kidding. to watch it on TV. <laughs> I don't know how baseball players play in cold weather. I tell you, I, I you know, you can, they can have that. <laughs> It is 47 degrees in Charlottesville right now. I mean, the good news is it is dry, right? And can you imagine how bad it would be if it was damp? The low tonight is expected to be 38. Nope. <laughs> went down low. Look at what a one. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure that I can get you a good. Oh, here it is. The wind chill uh, makes it feel like it is 39 degrees right now. <laughs> on the ground to the left side. Gobbled up there. Throw to second. They get one on to first. A double play, two outs. Excellent double play started by the Virginia defense. And by Hanson, the third baseman. Uh, just a great job right there. Great first step under control. Absolutely no panic. Looks like Griffo Farrell does a nice job. One hand, quick turn. Even quicker at second base. And oh, man, that's great stuff. That's great stuff. I, that was, that's not routine. That was an excellent turn by a third baseman making the turn. But you're right, it was O'Farrell who was alone in the shift. and. Boy, those hands, I mean, again, we talked about it before. Vance Honeycutt and he are two of the top defenders in the country. Honeycutt, the center fielder for North Carolina. O'Farrell at shortstop, just dynamite. Uh, pitcher's best friend, a double play ball, and you know, we've hit on it all night. Griff O'Farrell, one of the best shortstops in, 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 in the country, if not the best defensive shortstop in the country. And, uh, they, that's what they do. They, they make tough plays look routine and a uh, beautiful double play right there. Two and one the count. Two and one the count to Gallagher. The pitch. Called strike. It's two and two. If Virginia ends up coming back to win this game, Blake Barker is their MVP tonight. He has done a marvelous job settling this game down. The 2-2. Tried to check his swing. He, he went around. Barker's fired. They have a chance to be a better finish than what we saw in the first part. So uh, it's going to be a great finish. My fastball. Ford tried to check his swing. He went around. It's 0-1. Ford, we mentioned at the beginning, is from Charlottesville. He is a little league legend in Charlottesville. That's the way Brian O'Connor describes him. He played against uh, Brian's son in little league. And he was a guy who was ticketed for the University of Virginia basically <laughs> from the moment that he stepped onto a baseball field. 
stops and a foul and out of play. On the flip side, Matthew Mateus, who you get a look at there, was a Little League star on the Greenville Little League World Series team in North Carolina. He was part of a group of 12-year-olds that threw a combined no-hitter. I believe it was a perfect game in Williamsport. So you have a couple of Little League legends, and Henry Ford wins this battle way out of here into the clubhouse. We're tied at 11. Henry Ford, second of the night. Career high, five RBI, and Virginia has come back to tie it. Uh, he's feeling it, and rightfully so. One-two fastball, perfectly executed, way up above the zone. That two-strike approach from this Virginia Cavalier ball club always seems to pay off. And here we go, Mikey. We got a brand-new ball game. Bottom of the six. Kevin, that pitch was above the letters. It was at his shoulders, and he hit it out. Insane. Insane, I, I tell you, it's... This this Virginia ball club and what they do with two strikes and the way that they they shorten things up and and and, and they don't try to do too much and yeah, That's a ball that's at his eyes. He has the ability to get on top of always ready to hit the fastball That's what Virginia does. I think that's what makes them one of the best Offenses in the country year in and year out is they hunt fastballs They never seem to get off fastballs and, until they're completely forced to do so and now that's a young freshman doing something like that. You said Little League legend. I'd like to believe uh, <laughs> college legends coming here pretty soon. Yeah, he's almost a UVA legend as Mateus gets Didowick looking one out. I, you know, I was thinking about, if you think about those pitch sequences, Mateus got him 0-1 on a pitch in a very similar spot to the one that he hit out, right? It was a pitch up above the zone. He checked his swing. It was called a full swing, and like two pitches later, he's hitting it out of the ballpark. And that's the poster child for pitch-to-pitch -pitch adjustments, right? <laughs> you got that right. You got that right. And I tell you, that was a perfectly executed pitch. Just got to tip your cap to, to Henry Ford, a young man who really has a good idea what he's doing at the plate, and, and, and he's off to a hot start this year, and it doesn't seem like he's letting up anytime soon. Ferentz doubled and scored his last time. Virginia down 11 to 6 at one point. Has come back to tie this game at 11 in the sixth. Twenty two runs on a freezing cold night in Charlottesville. In the air to right field, going back on it is D'Onofrio, who'll make the catch. That's out number two. That'll bring up Ethan Anderson. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Outside of the weather, which I'm sure nobody's really enjoying playing in the weather. In a game like this, and I know the pitchers aren't having fun. We're just not going to let pitchers listen right now. How fun is it? when it's back and forth like this. Oh, this is the best for position players. I mean, you're chopping at the bit for your chance to have your next at bat, and... Oh, this, this... Mateus, pitching behind Folger Boaz on Friday last week, getting the win for Carolina as they swept that series. Pence also pitched on Sunday. 15th appearance of the year, great numbers for the lefty. A guy that's got a great fastball and says, here it is. Let's see what you can do with it. And it's fastball, rare changeup, rare slider. Fastball that he used at the top of the zone. And it's it's just one of those fastballs that look great coming out of the hand. And the next thing you know, the ball's in the mitt. Pencil face Ethan Anderson 0 for 3 tonight. Anderson fly out to right as a right-handed hitter against the lefty starter, Folger Boaz. 11-11, bottom six.
feels more like February weather in Charlottesville tonight. Here we've got midsummer offense going. First pitch, hit to the right side, sliding stop Madeira. To his feet, throws him out. Excellent play. Hitting, right? Got that right. I don't think the data backs that up. <laughs> it does feel like it happens all the time. <laughs> I think there's about a one in nine chance of it happening. <laughs> Here's the 1-0 to Madeira. That went down low. Count two and on Madeira. Sparkling defensive play getting in the end. But he has been on base three times tonight. He has really helped to spark rallies for North Carolina, who at the end of three innings had 11 runs on the board. They haven't scored since. Blake Barker is the reason why. What a job he did in his longest outing of the year for Virginia. Three and a third innings of excellent relief to help keep the Virginia team in this game. Up and in, it's three and one. That may have caught Brian Miller, our home plate umpire. That, ooh, I mean, 45 degrees and that catches you flush on the arm. Ah, oh, man, that hurt. Good to see he's all right back in there. He's tough. Good news is he's not going to need to ice it tonight. <laughs> three and one. the leadoff man for North Carolina in this seventh inning. Pitch. Bounce back to the mound. Love by Osinski. He'll throw to first and the leadoff man gone in the Carolina so, Devin, we were talking uh, before the game a little bit about we're at that point now is going you know, to look at this uh, again. Nice play by Osinski. Found that one. But uh, we have now reached the time of the year where we start to get postseason projections, right? We have the field of 64. We just crossed the halfway point on Sunday. As that went towards the middle. We gobbled up by O'Farrell, two up, two down. And as of right now, the guys at D1 Baseball are projecting nine ACC teams in the field. They have five hosts that they are estimating right now. Clemson, UNC, and Florida State would all be top eight seeds. Duke and Virginia would be hosts. See, Virginia made a College World Series appearance last year. Wake, NC State, Virginia Tech, and Miami all in, and Boston College as one of the first four out. So at least nine in the field this year is what they're guessing now. Now again, that's just based on all the information we have at this moment. But you're trying to project forward a little bit on what could happen down the stretch. Yeah, it, 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 it speaks right to the point that, that we were talking about. This ACC is deep, it's loaded. And, and you mentioned a team to me earlier that's not on that list in, in Louisville. And, and, and you talk about them being a young team that's just continuing to get better and better. And they're guys who they, they, they run all over you and, and their they're starting pitching is solid. and. So no, there's no doubt there's a ton of baseball left this year, and, and I'd like to hope that that projection is is holding true at the end of the year, but you never know with this ACC. There's always a team that seems to get hot this time of year and goes on a big run. Low, it's three and one. As of right now, D1 baseball is projecting 11 SEC teams. I would not be surprised if the ACC ends up with 10, the way things are trending, because it has been a little bit of a down year in the Big 12. It has been a down year in the Pac-12. And the Big 10 has been a little bit of a disappointment. Both Iowa and Indiana coming into the year were viewed as potential regional hosts. As of right now, only Nebraska has a resume Good enough for an at-large bid. Called strike three. Just home runs allowed in conference play tonight. Given up four. First pitch misses outside to Luke Hansen. 1-0. Hansen, Eric Becker, and then Griff O'Farrell to hit. 
It's Dalton Pence in the count one of one. It's a swing and a miss. 91 mile an hour fastball. In the air, right center. Moving over is D'Onofrio. He'll make the catch. Lead-off man gone in the I think spring football is a big deal in your family, right? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Love me some good college football. Love me some college football. <laughs> I'll miss going to Florida State games every weekend. I'll tell you that. That's right. It's one and one. I've never been down there for a football game. I assume that it is incredible. Oh, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. I wish I could have been a career college athlete. I tell you, I would have, <laughs> would have never left. <laughs> uh, two and one the count. To Eric Becker, who hit his first collegiate home run back in the fourth. Strike. It's two and two. There's at least one Virginia fan that was not happy with that call. Swing and a miss. That fastball blew him away. Two outs. That's that fastball he's got right there. You see 92 miles per hour. It looks like it's right down the shooter. And I tell you, that's a fastball that has a ton of ride, ton of spin, and really jumps on these hitters coming into this game 40 percent whiff rate leading the country only at 92 93 he'll whip in a couple 95s every now and then but it tells you what what kind of fastball he has there it is Hagen Smith just ahead of him who is in line potentially to be pitcher of the year you see Mason Molina Molina in that Arkansas rotation he doesn't even throw as hard as Pence does I said leading the country. Darn, third in the country. My bad, Pence. <laughs> Down low. It's two and one. Griff O'Farrell. One for three. A sacrifice fly as last time. He's hit four balls to right field. He takes low. It's three and one. That was a Griff O'Farrell special. Just try and fight one off into right. Three and one the count, the pitch. O'Farrell skies one to left. Coming in, calling for it is Honeycutt staggering in the wind. He calls off Cook, makes the catch, and it's a one, two, three, seventh for Dalton Pence. Blake Wright, who was ACC Player of the Week two weeks ago. Devin is voting as many times as he can for his Knowles. James Tibbs having a great season for Florida State. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you, you you know where my boats are heading. Ah, <laughs> uh, he votes with his degree. Yeah, Casey Cook to lead things off here, but he is on that list. And I think before the season, if you had said, well, one of the Carolina players is going to be in the mix for the Golden Spikes Award, I think the safe money would have been on Vance Honeycutt. But it certainly speaks to how much this left-handed hitting outfielder has really improved. He hit for a high average last year, but the power has come along. And boy, he's just a really dangerous college hit. Yeah, he really is. And, and I think power just comes along as, you, as you, you get older. You get stronger. He went to the Cape, faced the toughest competition in the country with the wood bat, gets a metal bat back in his hand, and he's like, man, if I could have success with the wood bat, this is going to be a lot of fun. And I think a lot of it as well comes with good swing decisions. I think he does a great job staying in the zone. I think he does a good job putting himself in good hitters counts. And when he gets pitches that he's looking for, he hasn't missed them this year. Three and one the count. He's in a great count here. He taps it foul. The count is full. Kirk has definitely increased his draft profile. He is draft eligible this year. Despite the fact they rarely played it in his first year in North Carolina. He is 21, so he will be a part of his draft class. There is a good chance that he could be selected in the middle of day two in the draft, somewhere around the fifth round. Bounce to first. Loved there and taken. The bag by Ford, one out. 
We talked a little bit with Kylie McDaniel, the draft and prospect expert at ESPN this week about some of the players in there. And Cook is one of those guys who I think that, that because the power is starting to come, and the more you watch him play, Devin, I think the more scouts are going to like him because he can just hit. Like, he's just, I don't know how much power there is in pro ball, but he's going to get a chance to play because he can really hit. Yeah, it's, it's coming back. You know, teams valuing guys that put the ball in play. And we're living in an era right now where guys are throwing harder than ever. And strikeouts are at an all-time high. To go along with that, walks are at an all-time high. And, you know, for a bit, we were getting so big on big swings and power. And, and I just like to, to, to believe that guys like, like Casey Cook, those are guys that help you win because they get the ball to go forward. They continuously put themselves in good counts and give themselves good opportunities to, to drive in runs. I think the other part of it is that guys like that, to your point before, that the power tends to come later. And evaluating hitters is the toughest thing to do in baseball. As Parts Harbor flashes one into left field, and Carolina has the go-ahead run on here in the eighth. But Cook controls the strike zone pretty well. He doesn't swing and miss. Scott Forbes thinks he's one of the best pure hitters in the league. He's a very, very intriguing guy, and you can see teams taking a chance on him because my guess is, well, scouts will say, yeah, this is a guy that can hit. The data that goes into the draft models, the way they control the strike zone and swings at pitches in the zone and makes hard contact with them, it's probably going to score out pretty well. Ryan O'Connor's a pair of home runs, including Henry Ford's grand slam. Carolina then eventually led 11 to 6, but Virginia has worked their way back. Four homers tonight, including a pair from their freshman first baseman Ford. First pitch to D'Onofrio is a strike, 0 and 1. I guess the only saving grace for a left-handed hitter is that Tonus is on the third base side of the rubber. If he was on the first base side, I think he'd be checked out before the ball got to home plate. Foul away. It's 0-2. Uh, that's a great point. That's a great point. Tonus checks the watch to see what sign he's getting from the bench. The 0-2 to D'Onofrio. Called strike three. Just painted two outs. Uh, that's a wicked breaking ball right there. And, you know, you just hit on that, Mikey. And I, I you know, as, as a hitter, it's something that I'd never really thought about when I was at, at the plate. But I, I wonder if he starts on the left side of the rubber here for that pitch exactly. It gives him a little more room to start the breaking ball at a left-handed hitter. Gives him a little more space to find, to find the strike zone. Well, he's done his job. He got the one out that Brian O'Connor wanted him to get, getting the left-handed hitting D'Onofrio. And O'Connor's going to go back to the bullpen with the slugging Alberto Ozuna due next. Pitching change coming. Virginia back into the pen. They will turn to Matt Augustine. Tell you about the... Freshman right-hander coming into a big spot in the opener of this key ACC series between top 15 teams. This monster power threat in the middle of the Carolina lineup. A big spot for Augustine. First pitch, strike. 0-1. Oh That's Augustine's strength right there. Fastball's up in the zone. Guy that likes to attack hitters, 72% fastballs in his arsenal. Throw over to first and diving back safely. The runner. Parks Harbor gets the lead at first. Not much of a threat to run is Harbor. One of the few guys that doesn't run in this Carolina lineup. Upstairs, the count one and one. Carolina's running game, as much as it is, has, has largely been shut down. They haven't had many opportunities since the start of the fourth inning. Madera got picked off. Ozuna was erased on a double play in the sixth. He swings and misses. A big, powerful cut there. It's one and two. 
See him using that big fastball. There it is again up in the zone. 89, 90 miles an 89, 90 miles an hour. Curveball's his best pitch. The one-two. Foul back. Just did get a piece. Obviously, nice job to catch his hat. Popped off his head. Pitchers are athletes too, Mikey. <laughs> See, that's why you have to let them field their position, Devin. On a <laughs> pop-up, you gotta let them catch it. <laughs> <laughs> what a two the count. Upstairs, it's two and two. Look back at this. Watch this. This is coordination. I mean, he almost caught it on his head. Smooth, baby. <laughs> Two and two. Swing and a miss. Got him on the breaking ball. Virginia's bullpen. Bobby Whalen, Casey Sauke, and Henry Ford, who's homered twice tonight. And Whalen in the big cut there. It's 0 and 1. There you enough. get a look at Ford. Can't say enough about the job Barker and Ozinski. Did in the middle of this ball game, keeping North Carolina at bay, giving them a chance to fight their way back, and here we are. Virginia always finds a way to get themselves back in a ball game. Meeting number 313 between these two clubs, one of the highest scoring in history. 11-11. Pence taking his time, using the clock to his advantage. Misses high, one and two. Oh, I love that. He used the pitch timer to try and wait out Whalen. <laughs> That's some smart pitching. Pitch outside, two and two. Whalen on base three times tonight, goes down on strikes. Boy, Dalton Pence has been two of the top three teams in the country squaring off. Two of the top 15 in the nation here tonight. Carolina trying, coming off a road series sweep in Winston-Salem, trying to win another game on the road in conference play. Virginia trying to hold off Carolina and get a critical home series win. Okay, fouls it away. It's on two. Sauke, 0 for 2 tonight. The 1 2. Foul back again. Boy, Pence just comes right at you with that fastball and dares you to hit it. Uh, you got to love that out of your reliever. One and two the count. Low, it's two and two. See him go to the breaking ball there. We know he's been fastball heavy. Casey Salki, a very good fastball hitter. Wonder if he's got the, the courage to go back to it or if he's gonna go to his bread and butter, the fastball. All the way again. Salki putting together a pretty good at bat here, fighting off pitches. Trying to get something down in the zone that he can drive. He swings and pops it up. Going out, Madeira coming in, D'Onofrio, and still streaking across right center, makes the catch, two outs. And here comes Henry Ford tonight in the first inning, the Charlottesville legend. A grand slam the other way. And this solo home run in the sixth that tied the game at 11. We have reached the key moment of the game. 11-11, bottom eight. First pitch. Check swing. Did he go? No swing. It's 1-0. Oh. You think this at bat means something to Pence? He's very well aware. Bumps up to 93 right there on that fastball. 
That's a changeup that misses away, and the count two and nothing to four. The left-handed hitting Harrison Didowick is on deck. 2-0. Ford! Left field! Way back! He did it again! He did it again! He did it again! Henry Ford has given Virginia the 12 2-0 count, gets a slider up, elevated out over the plate. Henry Ford's ready to hit. Six RBIs on the night. Third home run. You called it, Charlottesville legend. He has arrived. Dalton Pence's reaction. As Henry Ford, who has been a legend since Little League in Charlottesville, now doing it for his hometown school. And we're going to get a conference at the mound here as Pence falls behind 2 0. The last Cavalier to hit three home runs in a game, Dan Street did it against Old Dominion in 2002. Wow. I mean, that is, that is an, impress, an, an impressive freshman right there. 2 0 count. Understanding the situation guy that throws a ton of fastballs looks for something out over the plate gets a slider That's hanging right over the middle Doesn't miss it And a four pitch walk to Didowick And now an insurance run is on as here comes Ferentz 12 11 Virginia First, the runner dives back. Now, uh, we, we should look ahead to North Carolina in the ninth. They will have Luke Stevenson as the leadoff hitter. He homered three times in the final two games against Wake Forest last weekend. Gavin Gallagher, who is one of their top on base men, and then the veteran infielder Alex Madera. So six, seven, and eight due for Carolina in the ninth. Bovair trying to keep it a one-run deficit. It's one of one. Jackson Vandebreek has taken over at third, so he is going to hit second in the inning. The veteran third baseman, excellent defender. He's not had a great season this year, but has been a good performer in the ACC. Count is one and two. Take a look at Jackson Vanderbreak. Former Tacoma Community College product. Really good player. 56 game on base streak last year. He was hitting at the top of that Carolina lineup for a lot of the season. 12-11, Virginia leads on Henry Ford's third homer of the night. Bovair trying to keep the deficit to one, and he gets a ground ball to third inside the bag and fair. Down into the left field corner. Dinowick around third. He's being waved home. He will score. RBI double for Jacob Ferentz, and Virginia leads 13-11. There goes that man again, Jacob Ferentz gets a breaking ball up in the zone. Doing a little bit more of what he's been doing all year long. Big time run, providing a little bit of cushion. You see Harrison Dederick make sure he keeps his helmet on his head, scoring the big run. Two out hitting, we've been talking about it all night long. Virginia's been great at it all year long. And delivering here again in the bottom of the eighth. Ethan Anderson to right field, deep. D'Onofrio on the run, can't get it, it's off the wall. Dittelink scores, or Ferentz scores, excuse me, into second with the double as Anderson. It's 14-11 Virginia. That 
points after trailing after trailing 11 to 6 at the end of three innings Virginia has scored the last eight runs of this game uh, this offense is crazy man I tell you you never feel like you have enough runs and uh, that's a big one there for Ethan Anderson here in the bottom of the eighth inning a guy that's been struggling to get going in the sense of his norm coming up with a big hit you got to think something like that in a big environment like this where energy's all over the place oftentimes it's hits like that that really turn your season around and get you rolling and here's Luke Hansen who hit a two run homer back in the first up and in and nearly hit him it's one and one five Virginia home runs tonight They have come back to take control of the opening game of this series. But the way tonight has gone, Devin, this one is far from over. You got that right. Two and one the count. Way outside, it's three and one. Eric Becker, who homered back in the fourth, is on deck and a righty beginning to get loose very quickly in the Carolina pen. The three one in the air, right field. D'Onofrio has it inning over with a double and a single. First pitch to Stevenson and he pops it up. Right side. Right there to make the catch. And out number one. Exactly what you want right there. Matt Augustine first pitch strike getting a quick out. Uh, I tell you, eight unanswered runs by this Virginia club since the third inning. And we know they've been known for comebacks. This will be their second biggest comeback of the year if they're able to close this game out. Unbelievable. That'll bring up Jackson Vanderbreek. The biggest one they had was back in the Jacksonville College Baseball Classic, a tournament that included... Virginia, Auburn, Iowa, and Wichita State. They were down 6 nothing to Iowa and came back against the Hawkeyes' bullpen to win that game. One and one. Vanderbreek, who came in for defense earlier, his first plate appearance of the night. Carolina needs base runners down at three. There's a strike. It's one and two. And what's left of this hearty crowd in Charlottesville is energized by this huge comeback. The one, two. These fans who sat through frigid temperatures for well over three hours now have been treated to a really entertaining ball game. And this is the first of three. Here's the 2-2. Popped up. On the infield. Becker has it. Two outs. And Virginia one out away from a huge comeback win. Virginia pitching has set down 16 of the last 18 hitters they've faced. That after giving up 11 runs in the first three innings. This pitch is a strike to Madera, 0 and 1.
five relievers over the last five frames have done an exceptional job for Virginia. That one outside, it's one and one. Can't say enough about the job Barker did tonight, stepping up in that big situation, holding him right there, and then Ozinski and Tonis, and now Augustine in trying to close it out. The 1-1, one, one, down low, 2-1. and one. Blake Barker, three and a third innings, as Devin mentioned. Longest outing of his Virginia career, the transfer from D2 Seton Hill. He settled the game down. Just a wonderful job to help keep Virginia in it. Liner on one hop to short. O'Farrell to first. Virginia wins. Yo, ain't no battle within the fight We can't ignore against our own demons On the internal war from the dust that plague us To the fears that bind We're in that constant struggle In the depths of our mind The voices of insecurity They scream so loud But we'll drown them out With our courage proud Through the trials and tribulations We'll stand tall in the face of adversity We'll never fall It's a struggle within Against our own doubts But we'll fight through the darkness And find our route In the battle against ourselves We'll find our might In the merge victorious In the shining light It's a journey of self-discovery A quest for truth to break free from the chains of our own youth We'll push beyond limits and reach for the sky In the fight against ourselves We'll never say die through the ups and downs We'll persevere, overcoming obstacles without fear For the greatest battle we'll ever face Is the one within, in this human race It's a struggle within, against our own doubt But we'll fight through the darkness and find our route In the battle against ourselves we'll find our might and emerged victorious in the shining light. So as we face the challenges that lie ahead, let's remember the strength that lies within instead. For in the fight against ourselves, we'll find our truth. And in the struggle within, we'll find our youth. Yeah. In the melody of life, let's take a stand against our own demons hand in hand. For in the battle against ourselves, we'll rise and conquer our fears, reaching for the skies.